Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, we, we give God thanks and praise. Uh, it has really been a very, very interesting year, 2020. Um, nobody, nobody expected this year to be this way. But, you know, the Bible says in all things, we should give God thanks. In all things, we give God thanks. Uh, because the Bible says all things work together for our good. For those of us who love God, who are called according to his purpose. So irrespective of how the year has been, we, we continue to give him thanks and praise. Hallelujah. And uh, we're, this, is, this is November. Here in the UK, we've just uh, started another lockdown, which we hope will last for a month. And we just trust the Lord. Uh, this year will end well. And I trust the Lord for everyone listening to me today. This year will end well for you in Jesus' name. Very quickly, I'm going to be um, talking about a subject that I, I have ta taught about quite a lot over the years. In fact, um, I wrote a book about this a few years ago titled Sex, Woman and God. Sex, Woman and God. Um, you can get this book on, on Amazon uh, if you haven't gotten your copy yet. It's, it's on the Kindle and you can also get uh, uh, a hard copy you know, on, on Amazon. Uh, if you haven't gotten a copy, you need to get a copy because you know, I'll be making a lot of reference to this book you know, all through the, the, these uh, series of teachings. So um, this, this, I'm going to basically be titling this uh, series of teachings the gospel, the gospel of sex, the gospel of sex. Now, why the gospel of sex? You see, the sex is a subject that I, I realized that many Christians have no clue about. If I'm not just Christians, to be honest with you, I mean, even Many people, let's just put it like that, many people, men and women, have very little understanding of the subject of sex. And, you know, there is a saying, when the purpose of a thing is not known, abuse is inevitable. And that is just so true. When you don't know what something is about, if you don't understand a particular thing, you know, you, you tend to abuse it. And that is what I, I, I realized even when it comes to the subject of sex. Unfortunately, it is so difficult to actually get proper information about this very beautiful blessing from the Lord. Uh, and after I wrote my, my first book, uh, Sex, Woman and God, I got so many emails from so many people asking me so many questions. I mean, I got questions like, why is sex in marriage so boring? You know, I got questions like, you know, um, so many questions, <laughs> so many questions. Um, what should I do if my husband is not having, is not able to satisfy me in bed? Um, you know, but one thing, one of, those, one of the, the questions I got a lot was from women, you know, basically asking, you know, that how could they make sex with their husbands a lot more interesting, you know? And um, yeah, so basically all these questions, all these questions over the years have kind of made me decide, you know, I think I should do these series of teachings uh, where I, by his grace, try as much as possible to break down this subject, you know, and go in depth about the subject of sex so that you know everyone out there will be able to listen to this now and of course in the future and and get enough knowledge to be able to get the best out of this most beautiful blessing uh, from God uh, and so before we start let's just say a word of prayer Father in heaven, I thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you, Lord, for giving me this privilege to teach on this subject because you are the one that taught me first. Father, I pray that everyone that would listen to this series of teachings, that you would 
open their eyes, their eyes of understanding, to, to really come to a deep understanding of the purpose of this beautiful gift from you, the gift of sex. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, uh, without, how, without wasting too much time, we're going to basically be starting today with what I call an introduction. You know, throughout these series of teachings, I'm going to be talking about very interesting topics. Like, for instance, I'm going to be talking about fornication. What, what exactly is fornication? I'm going to be talking about adultery. What does adultery mean? Today, we're going to be trying to define sex. <laughs> you know, how, what is sex? You get, what is sex? And we're going to be trying to define that. Uh, we're going to be talking about things, subjects such as um, polygamy. You know, uh, we're going to be touching on polygamy. We're going to be touching on sex before marriage. You know, is it of God to have sex before you get married? Uh, we're going to be talking about um, so, things like what is prostitution? Is it what are the ramifications of having sex with a prostitute? You know, what does God think about it? We're going to be talking about so many, I mean, masturbation as well. We're going to be dealing with masturbation. You know, what exactly is masturbation? What, what is it? Is it, is it a sin? Is it not a sin? Is it, is it from the devil? We're going to basically be talking about a lot of things that many pastors will not talk about. A lot of things you will not hear from the pulpit. Um, well, you might say, yeah, so basically just, just be prepared. It's going to be very exciting. <laughs> it's going to be very exciting. And, you know, my prayer, you know, my desire is that after these series of teachings, everyone will be able to know exactly what sex is all about and most of all how to get the very best of sex in a relationship praise the lord so without much ado what exactly is sex how how do you define sex now for that i'm going to go to to my book uh sex woman and god and i'm going to read from page 15 and right there I, 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 I write a, a definition from the dictionary, okay? Now, the dictionary, the American Heritage Dictionary says, defines sex as the sexual urge or instinct as it manifests itself in behavior. Um, the Cambridge Advanced Learner's Dictionary says, sexual activity involving the penis or vagina, is it or and? It says, or vagina, especially... When a man puts his penis into a, a woman's vagina, um, the Merriam-Webster dictionary says, either of the two major forms of individuals that occur in many species, that's very biological, and that are distinguished respectively as female or male, especially on the basis of their reproductive organs and structures, that's quite a complicated definition. Now, in my opinion, all these definitions are limiting somewhat. And why do I say that? Because if you look at the, the, the definition from the Cambridge Advanced Learner's Dictionary, it basically limits a sex to a sexual activity. And that, my, my friends, is one of the major problems we have when it comes to understanding sex. A lot of us see sex as purely physical. And as a result, you know, we, we, met, we, we don't understand what it's about. And we, 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 we basically fall short. Yeah, once you don't understand something, then, like I said, abuse is inevitable. So let's go into the Bible and open our Bibles to the book of 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5, verse 23. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. I'm going to read a piece of scripture there that kind of will help us to uh, begin to understand 
the complexity of what sex is. Now it says, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God, your, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God, your whole spirit and soul and body. You see, right there, the Bible kind of breaks down the human being into, uh, into three parts. That, that is, you as a person, you are a spirit. You are a spirit. You have a soul. And you live in a body. You are a spirit. You have a soul. Now your soul comprises of your will, your emotions, and your, your mind. Okay, your mind, your will, and your emotions. And I'm going to break all this down, even as we try to define what sex is. So, and of course, your body is your body. So now if you define sex purely as a physical experience, then think about it. It means, therefore, that you can actually go into like maybe a mortuary or something like that. And you have two cadavers. And you can take those cadavers if, if you're able to. I mean, of course, this is quite uh, silly, you know. Uh, but that definition means you can take two cadavers that are lifeless, but they're bodies. And you can put them together, put the, 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 the male penis in the female's vagina. And according to the uh, Cambridge Advanced Learners Dictionary, those two bodies are having sex. But you and I know that that is not the case. <laughs> You and I know that two dead bodies cannot have sex, okay? Because everyone that has sex know that sex is a lot deeper than that. Brilliant. So, why can't two dead bodies have sex? Because sex is not just a physical activity. Sex is spirit. Sex is soul. And sex is body. What do I mean? Let us start from sex being spirit man is a spirit when you have sex when two people have sex in a relationship or maybe not in a relationship when two people have sex the bottom line is there are two spirits having sex and those two spirits their emotions are involved so that's two souls having sex and of course they are having sex using their bodies most of the time. Um, so, in essence, when you understand that definition of sex, you will realize that when you are having sex with someone else, you are not just having sex with a physical body. It's deeper than that. So, in essence, you know, you, you, you go into a, a, a pub, or you go into, 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 into a bar, or you, you know, you, and you see this wonderful woman, you know, with amazing body, fantastic curves. And you think, you know what? Wow, I have to put my penis in this woman's vagina. <laughs> you know, that's, you know I, I've got to, I've got to, I've got to, you know, strip her naked and have sex with her. Vice versa, a woman goes into a club, sees this really raunchy looking guy. Said, mm, my God, this guy is a rugby player. Dear Lord, I need to have sex with this specimen. <laughs> and, you know, in both of these people's minds, they're just seeing the body. That's it. That person is just a physical entity. But what you don't realize is that that penis or that vagina is connected to a spirit. So, you are not having a physical interaction. You are actually having a spiritual interaction. And guess what? If most of the time you can't actually see the spiritual, all you can see is the physical. <laughs> all you can see is the physical. So, in essence, if you don't really take time to know the person 
that you want to have sex with, you might literally not know what or who you're having sex with. What or who? Now, let me explain this a little bit. <laughs> you know, uh, when you watch this, this movie, The Game of Thrones, there is a woman there called Melisandre. Melisandre is this really gorgeous looking woman with, you know, she's got, she's beautiful. She's got beautiful curves. She's usually wearing red. And, you know, lovely curves, beautiful personality, uh, very, very attractive. But, you know, towards the end of the Game of Thrones, when she was about to die, look at what she turned into. She turned into this really ugly looking being because she was actually someone who had lived for so many years. She had been alive for about 400 years. Now you might ask, oh, Pastor K, come on, man. You know, why are you talking like this? Are you part of, are you a QA or something? No, no. The spiritual realm is real. The spiritual realm is real. And the truth of the matter is, <laughs> you know, and we're going to be dealing with this a lot more. You know, we're going to go a lot deeper into this. The spiritual realm is deep. There's so many things in the spirit that you don't know. <laughs> Not everything in black and white makes sense. So you need to be careful. Who are you making having sex with? So in essence, when you understand that sex is not purely physical, then you are cautious. You are cautious about how you deploy <laughs> your sexual tools. You understand? Part time. Praise the Lord. That's <laughs> so important. So sex is more than just two physical bodies, you know, coming together. And, and, and also with women. You know, there are a lot of times that, I mean, I have heard stories of girls having sex with men, and after that, you know, the woman just falls sick. And before long, she dies. And you're like, oh, wait, but just sex? No, it's not just sex. It's not just sex. Now, you know, they say, oh, you know, that's, you, all my friends are doing runs and they're buying, all, they're buying all manner of expensive things. What's the big deal? Is it not just sex? <laughs> well, the Lord help you, eh? It's not just sex. Sex is not just a physical activity. Sex is spirit. Sex is soul. And sex is body. When I say sex is soul, let me just touch on that before we round up uh, today. When I say sex is a soul, what do I mean? See, sex basically involves your, your will, your emotions, and your mind. This is very important, especially a lot of us Christians. You know, a lot of religious people believe that when they're in a relationship, or when they're in, especially when they're married, they believe that sex is mainly for reproduction okay so they're not supposed to enjoy sex <laughs> their minds are not involved their emotions are not involved and there's some very warped people and i use the word warped that believe that the will of the other person is not involved now any man that has sex with a woman against her will or any woman that has sex with a man against his will, they have raped that man or woman. You have committed rape. <laughs> and if you are caught, you will be punished. Okay? Because sex, first and foremost, involves the will of both parties. Both parties must agree before you can say you're having sex. So the will is involved. That's the first thing. The second thing is the emotions are involved. 
Now, let me break this down. You, you cannot be having sex and maybe as a man, you're having sex with your woman and you know, and then you're, you're well, it's not likely that a man would do this, but maybe your, your, your wife, you're having sex with your wife and she's reading newspaper. You're having sex with your wife and she, you know, she's basically just totally unresponsive. It's like you are having sex with a log of wood. No, that is not sex. Sex, that is not a, getting the best of sex. And that only happens when you don't understand that sex is much more than a physical activity. Sex involves the emotions. You need to bring your emotions into the activity of sex so that both parties can enjoy the whole experience of sex. You know, um, which is why I tell people, you know, even especially married, those who have been married for a long time, or couples that have kids, you need to regularly take your spouse to a nice hotel. You know, those hotels that, you know, that you can go to where nobody can hear you people when you are screaming. Uh, you need to do those kind of things. <laughs> you know, not always be in the house. And then, especially here in the UK where the, the walls are so thin. Mm -hmm. So, you need to engage your emotions, okay? I'll stop there, but we'll take this on later on. Finally, sex involves the mind. When I, what, what does it mean when I say sex involves the mind? You need to think about sex, you know? You need to, you need to as, as, a, as a couple, for you to enjoy the fullness of sex, you need to engage your mind. You know, I was speaking to a, a friend of mine, you know, in Nigeria, and she was telling me that she and her husband, they have a room that they have, they have consecrated <laughs> for sex. They have all manner of toys in that room. Yeah, the room is uh, soundproof. I mean, for Christ's gracious sake, I think that's amazing. That's amazing. In essence, they, they engage their minds. They engage their minds to make sure that they enjoy sex to the optimum. That is very important. Women, engage your mind. Men, engage your mind. Sex is spirit. Sex is soul. Sex is body. Sex involves your mind. You know, think about it. Plan for it. Right? You know, Plan getaways with your, with your spouse, okay? And this is not about a man or a woman now. It's both, 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 both parties. You know, with wives should plan to get away with their husbands to go and give them a good shag. You know, men, plan to take your wife somewhere for a, for a weekend and, you know, just, just pleasure her. That is what sex is about. Sex is spirit. Sex is soul. And sex is body. Now, when you say sex is body, what do I mean? We're going to be getting into, we're going to be delving into all this in a lot more detail in, in the other sessions, you know, because we, we really need to define this in depth so that we can understand this great mystery that God has blessed us with. When you say sex is body, it's very important. I remember when the Holy Spirit started to introduce me to this subject. This was when I got married. Uh, about 26 years ago, I, I was in. I was. Uh, I was basically just going to the gym, you know, um, to play judo. Uh, but before I start my sessions, I always jog around the field, just you know, just to warm up. And as I was jogging, the Holy Spirit just whispered in my ears. He said, "Kola." I said, "Yes, sir." Look at those women stretching, you know, raising their legs, all wearing. Uh, track, 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 track suits and everything. Look at those guys lifting weights and everything, sweating. So why do you think they are doing all this? I said, well, Father, I don't know. And he said, it's because of sex. He said, why does a woman, before she comes out in the morning, stands in front of a mirror and looks at her bum bum, you know, looks at her, herself and makes sure she's set. She's going to the office. Why does she do that? Why does a man go to the gym and walk on their chest. They want to look good. Why? 
it's majorly sex and sexuality. Sex makes this world go around. That was what the Holy Spirit said to me 26 years ago. <laughs> and you know, <laughs> I was speaking to some friends of mine. I said, take away women from this world. Men will look so ugly. Take away women from this world. <laughs> Men will look absolutely nasty. Many of us will be smelling, will be stinking. We won't even wear perfume. We won't dress up. We won't do anything. But so... Sex involves the body. How you look is important. How you look is important. Being fit is important. You know, maintaining a, a, a good health regime is important. Now, just let me make, I, I know this topic makes a lot of people laugh, but it's very serious. You know, you're having sex with your wife. And then she's, she's, she's telling you, more, more, harder, harder. And then you go and faint because you're not fit. Think about it. Is that good? Is that a good thing now? <laughs> because basically, she was about to have an orgasm. And you say, oh, harder, harder, harder. And then in saying harder, you, try, you also try to do harder, harder. Then you faint. Because you never go to the gym. <laughs> you understand? Think about it. There are some men who they can't remember the last time they saw their, their penis. Because their bellies are so big. How can you... I, I don't understand. I don't even want to go there. <laughs> you know, because some guys say, this is TMI. No, it's not too much information. No. It's really, really important. Sex is body. Sex is body. You need to take care. And I'm going, like I said, I'm going to be delving into this in more detail in the other sessions that we're going to be doing. But it's important for us to understand. Sex involves the body. And the good thing about us as Christians is the Lord has promised us good health. The Lord has promised us good health. But we need to tap into that promise. I believe the Lord has, has promised a lot of us longevity. But how do you enjoy that longevity? Do you want to, be, to live long with a body that is just totally out of line and end up on a wheelchair? Or you want to live long, looking amazing. Well, let's even live longevity. We're talking about sex now. You cannot enjoy sex without a fit body. You can't. And if you're having sex today, you and your wife, you're not fit. Let me tell you 100%, you're not enjoying the best of sex. You're not. You're not. <laughs> you can't. How do you want to? You can't. Because sex is not a joke. Amen. Sex involves the body. So, um, as we round up for today, um, I, I, I know that a lot of you will, are going to have questions. Please, if you have any questions, uh, I, I, I mean anything at all, send an email to bk at kolawaleantony.com bk at kolawaleantony.com or basically just, you know, send a message to me on Facebook. We have a Facebook page, Kolawale Anthony Ministries. You can send me a message uh, on Facebook. I will respond to, to the messages. And if there's something that, you know, you want me to, to address, send it to me. I will address it. Um, there's no stupid question. There's no silly question. Um, but I know that this series will definitely change your lives. These series of teachings will change the lives of many people in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we just thank you so much, Lord, for this wonderful time in your presence. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege, Lord, to share these wisdom with people, these secrets with people, with your children. And I pray that as we continue in this series, that you will set people free, that your children will come to know and understand the mystery of sex and get the best out of this mystery in jesus holy name amen praise the lord